Continuing on with our series, What's Going On in the Spirit World in 2020. Last time we dealt with the spirit of fear. We acknowledge that the spirit of fear must be having the time of its life during this season. But we concluded that it doesn't have to be so in our lives because God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. Now, what I want you to know today is that often spirits don't move alone, but rather in groups. We see this in Matthew 12, verse 43 to 45, where it speaks about an evil spirit saying, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So today we're going to look at a spirit that works alongside with fear. And that is worry. John 10.10 10. The thief cometh to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That means everything he cannot kill, he will steal. Is the thief stealing your today with worry of tomorrow? What is worry stealing from you today? Worry will steal your youth right from underneath you. Worry will steal your rest from you at night. You've slept eight hours, but you wake up still tired. Why? Because of worry. Worry steals your sanity. Worry disturbs the sound mind that God has given you. Worry is believing you won't make it. Worry is having faith in the plan of the devil over the plan of God. You see, the adversary, the devil, knows you are heading to heaven. And if he can't stop you or cause you to backslide, he will make sure that your time on earth is haunted by worry. He knows he can't stop God from blessing you, but he can stop you from receiving those blessings. And he can stop you from enjoying those blessings. You see, the adversary is after your mind. He is after your mind. He knows if he gets your mind, he can sabotage your peace. He can sabotage your success. I don't know if you know it, but you were born to win. You were born to win. God made you the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. You were created a little lower than the angels. You were made in God's own image. But you cannot reach the heights that God wants you to reach if your mind is full of worry. The enemy is after your mind. Now I want to teach you a Bible principle that will help you overcome the spirit of worry. It has no right to occupy your mind. There are so many negative drawbacks of constantly worrying. You can't think straight. Your decision making is not on point. Now this one Bible principle literally revolutionized my life once I learned it. The principle is this, live one day at a time. I know it's not as earth shaking as you thought it was going to be. But this principle is taught throughout the scriptures. Let us look at some of our favorite examples of living one day at a time. The first example is God supplied the Israelites with their daily manna in Exodus 16.4. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day. A second example can be seen in Lamentations 3.22 where our Heavenly Father's mercies are new every morning. This verse says it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. A third example of this is when Jesus taught his disciples to ask for their daily bread. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Matthew 6.10 Now why does the Bible encourage us to depend on God daily? The answer is simple. To build up our faith. Remember the Bible says 
It is impossible to please God without faith. So in this year of 2020, I have one question for you and only one question. Do you trust God? I know all of this has come out of the blue. I know this year has hurt you. I know this year has disappointed you. I know the year has not turned out the way you wanted or the way you planned. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to one question. Do you trust God? When the unimaginable happens, do you trust God? When you're fired from your job that you thought was secure, do you trust God? When you can't handle another piece of bad news and you're hanging on by the skin of your teeth, by a thread and the phone rings, do you trust God? When your loved one leaves you, do you trust God? When the business you have poured your blood, sweat and tears has to close because of no fault of your own, do you trust God? I don't know what you are going through right now, but I have one question and one question only for you. Do you trust him? Now there's a verse that works alongside this principle of living one day at a time. And that's Deuteronomy 3.25 As thy days, so shall thy strength be. Other versions of this verse state, Your strength will match your day. Now you see, when this was written, Israel would encounter so many difficulties. Each and every day they would encounter difficulties. But God wanted his people to know, and God wants you to know, that he would be with them and will help them a day at a time. So in other words, what this verse is saying is that the harder the day, the more strength God will give you to deal with that day. No matter how big the challenge you are facing, God will always give you the strength to overcome it. If you trust in God, you can live with the assurance that God's strength is sufficient to get you through the dangers and challenges of life. God will give you strength if you trust in him in your time of weakness. God will never fail you. Look back at your life. Look at what you've been through. Look at what you've had to overcome. Look at the hell you've had to face. There are situations in your life that you had no right to overcome. But God gave you strength to win. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. You've been through battle after battle after battle after battle and you've still won. Some of you have overcome cancer multiple times, have defeated all types of illnesses, even when the odds were against you. Some of you have overcome psychological trauma, emotional trauma, physical trauma. By all rights, you shouldn't have made it. The devil threw his best shot at you. I mean he threw everything he had, including the kitchen sink. But you are still standing. And the same God that gave you the strength to survive, to overcome everything that you have been through, will not leave you now. You don't have to worry. God will be with you every single step of the way. In the words of the old hymn, I've seen the lightning flashing and I've heard the thunder roll. I felt sinners breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. I've heard the voice of Jesus telling me to fight on. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. There's one line in that hymn I want you to focus on. I've heard the voice of Jesus telling me to fight on. In other words, don't give up, never give up. Never give in because he promised me never to leave me alone. Hold on, be strong and courageous. Do not fear nor be afraid for the Lord your God, he's the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. God is faithful. God is faithful to his word. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man, that he should repent. Hath he said it? Shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken it? Shall he not make it good? If God said I am with you, he is with you. When you have Jesus with you, 
You'll have serenity in the midst of the storm. You'll have calmness in the midst of crisis. You'll have encouragement in the midst of difficulty. You'll have insurance in the midst of adversity. You will have assurance in the midst of affliction. You will have strength in the midst of struggle. You will have courage in the midst of the challenge. You will have boldness in the midst of the battle. You will have blessedness in the midst of burdens. You will have courage in the midst of criticism. You will have composure in the midst of calamity. You will have security in the midst of sorrow. You will have comfort in the midst of confusion. You will have confidence in the midst of conflict. You will have control in the midst of commotion. You will have relief in the midst of pressure. You will have inspiration in the midst of the impossible. You will have refuge in the midst of danger. You will have perseverance in the midst of the problem. You will have support in the midst of the warfare. You will have hope in the midst of the suffering. You will have victory in the midst of the hardship. You will have long suffering in the midst of the trial. Look at Isaiah 43 verse 1. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by my name. Thou art mine. You are God's child. If you've ever had children, you know how protective you are over them. Here God is telling you that he created you and you are his. You're not just a social security number. You're not just a national insurance number. You are not just another statistic. You are his child. Verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. God is not going to send an angel. God is not going to send Gabriel or Michael. He said he will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, Thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. You don't have to worry about the future or about the present. God will be with you. The harsh truth is that men can lie and say to you, I will always be there. And women can lie and say that they will always be there for you. But God is not a man that he should lie. He has promised you. I will never leave you or forsake you. And if the truth be told, a lot of people this year are going through the waters and are going through the fire. But if you trust God, your testimony this year will be, God was with me. God was with me. Every single step of the way, God was with me. What is there to worry about when God is there?